we've always got to combine terms that are the same. And when we combine terms, we have a couple of different things that I want to make sure all of my students remember. The first is variables can only be combined with identical variables. I'm going to show you different examples of this, but if we have an x and a 3x, those can go together because x's are exactly the same. If we have an x and an x squared, those cannot go together. If we have an x and just a regular number, those cannot go together. So I'll show you examples of that as we move forward. The second thing that I want students to remember is that numbers that don't have a variable can only be combined with other numbers that also don't contain a variable. So numbers can only go with numbers. Whether it's positive or negative, it doesn't matter. We can put numbers with other numbers. Okay, let's try one of these and see if we can put these two things to remember to use. So our directions say that they want us to simplify this expression. We're going to go about it the same way we would when simplifying any expression without variables. Um, we're going to circle our terms. And so I have a 3x that is positive. I have a 2x squared, which is also positive. And I can cross out that plus sign. I have a negative 6. I have a negative x, which there's only one x there, so I know that it's one x. I can put a one in front of it or just leave it as negative x. So that's negative. And I have a positive one. Okay, now I'm going to match things up based on our two things to remember. Now, letters can only go with other letters that are identical. That means 3x cannot be combined with 2x squared because the x is squared here and it's not where our 3x is. Remember, 3x is just to kind of jog our memory. If we broke this apart, it would be three separate x's. That's actually what it means. Okay. So I'm going to put together my 3x and my negative 1x. And I know that I have more positives than I do negatives. I have two more positive x's than negative x's. So when I put those together, I'm going to say that I have two positive x's. Okay, so first one is done. I'm going to cross those out. Second thing I'm going to put together is the numbers that I see. I've got negative 6 and I also have a positive 1. Numbers can go with numbers. These numbers do not have any variables with them, so they can be put together and simplified as well. I have six negatives and one positive. I have way more negatives. And so I know that I have five more negatives than positives. Okay. I can cross those terms out. The only thing that's left is 2x squared. There's nothing that can combine with 2x squared in order to simplify this expression anymore. So we just bring it down. It's still part of our expression. And since it's positive and I want to make it part of the new expression, I got to put a plus sign in front of it. So our simplified expression, if we write it all out, is going to be, and we can put these in any order that we want. I like to put any variables with exponents. I like to put that in front. So I'm going to put the 2x squared first. I'm going to follow it with my positive 2x. I can space this out. And then I'm going to end it with the number that I have that doesn't have a variable. So our simplified expression is 2x squared plus 2x minus 5. All right, the next example I'm going to give you deals with distributive property. And then after we distribute, we've got to simplify. So I'm going to tie some distributive property stuff into this lesson as well. When we take a good look at this, we have to look at where distributive property is. Distributive property means we're going to take a number and we're going to multiply it by each term that's inside of a set of parentheses. The number that's outside of our parentheses here is positive 3. And what I like to do for all of my students with distributive property is make sure that we understand we're going to cross that out. And above each one of the terms inside of the parentheses, I'm going to put 3 above it in parentheses. And that tells me I'm going to multiply 4x times 3 and positive 1 times 3. And we're going to get some new terms out of that. 
4 times 3 is 12. We still have our x attached to the 4. This is 4 x's, and we want 3 sets of 4 x, so it's going to give us a total of 12 x. 3 times 1 is going to give us positive 3. So there's our two new terms, and I'm going to circle them right away. And I'm going to say that 12 is positive, and so is the 3. Okay. Well, what did we still have outside of the parentheses that wasn't part of the distributive property piece? I had a 2x and a negative 8. I'm going to bring those down. Okay. Those are going to be now two terms that we're going to combine with our new terms that we've created after we've distributed. So I have a positive 2x and I have a negative 8. All right, let's put variables together. Letters can go with letters. x and x are exactly the same. So I have 2x's here and 12x's here, and everything is positive, so that's going to give me a total of 14 positive x's. I then can go ahead and put together my numbers that are just numbers. They have no variable attached to them. I have more negatives than I do positives. There's 8 negatives and 3 positives, so I'm going to have 5 negatives total. And this is my simplified expression after I've distributed.